Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, the Christ child, Emmanuel. I think it must have been very difficult for Joseph to, at first, believe Mary. Think about it. Mary receives word from the angel, Gabriel, that she's with child by the Holy Spirit and that she will give birth to the Son of God. He gives her the assurance that these words are true in the form of a sign. Even her relative Elizabeth is with child, and she who was said to be barren is now in her sixth month. So Mary leaves Nazareth. She travels to the hill country of Judea to visit Elizabeth and see for herself. And while she's away, Elizabeth's child is born, and Mary's pregnancy becomes visible. Now, she's returned home, and like I said, it must have been very difficult for Joseph. We can imagine their conversation, and in fact, through the drama, we just have. Joseph feels betrayed. He's angry. Maybe he's sick, or both. Maybe he feels like he's going to collapse. In any case, he's in the toughest spot of his life, and he doesn't know what to do. Separated by centuries, a much earlier son of David is also in one tough spot. King Ahaz, who we heard about in our Old Testament lesson, has just received word that the king of Syria and the king of Israel have united together to topple the southern kingdom of Judah. This is probably not a surprise. The towns and villages for miles in every direction from the capital city were already vanquished. But now they're threatening Jerusalem. And the Bible says that when they heard that these two kingdoms had united to attack, the heart of Ahaz and the heart of his people shook like the trees of the forest shake before the wind. Have you ever received news so scary that it almost knocked you down? I bet you have. Your sister has cancer. Your father has had an accident. Your child is not expected to live. Your job was eliminated. You're failing a class. Your car broke down, and you have no money to fix it. No car means no transportation. No transportation means no work, no income, and more stress, more agony, more fear. There's all sorts of things that can make our hearts shake like the trees of the forest, before the wind. Today we want to take a closer look at these two men separated by hundreds of years to learn if there's a way through that panic that sometimes grips us, to learn if there's a way that we can respond to all of life's tremors and stand firm on the promises of God. Simply because Ahaz comes first in time, let's start with him. What you already know is that Ahaz was in a tough spot. With two more powerful nations making war against him, Ahaz had little reason for hope. What you also know is that the Lord sent a prophet to Ahaz to tell him not to worry and not to fear. He calls these powerful kings smoldering stumps of firewood that he will quickly snuff out. In other words, God promises deliverance on account of his great love and mercy. Ahaz is backed up against the wall, but the Lord has promised to rescue him. And in order to make the words of the Lord more sure, God says to the prophet, ask for a sign in the highest heavens or in the deepest depths. This is complete and total mercy. He didn't offer this deliverance and this sign of his deliverance because Ahaz deserved it. In fact, he didn't deserve it at all. Ahaz was about as wicked a king as any of them ever were. His story is not one that we touched on last year as we read through the Bible in 31 weeks. But if you want to read about just how evil he was, you can check that out in 2 Chronicles 28 sometime. Now, If your back was up against the wall, if your heart and that of your people were shaking like trees before the wind, in a windstorm, wouldn't you take God's help? 
wouldn't you look for that help or beg for that help? Of course you would. And so would I. But Ahaz doesn't. Look at these words. He feigns humility and he says, far be it from me to ask the Lord for a sign. And do you know why? It's because Ahaz has already made a secret treaty with an even more powerful and an even more wicked nation. He doesn't take God's help because he doesn't need God. He doesn't want God. This more powerful and wicked foe will surely take care of the enemies of Ahaz. But it will also signal the beginning of his end too. Now let's look at Joseph. Joseph is also in a very tough spot. The woman he loves, that he thought he loved, that he thought he wanted to spend the rest of his life with, is having a baby that is not his. Joseph is in agony. There's no question that he would write her a certificate of divorce. He wouldn't press any claim against her so that she would not be harmed. When God comes to help Joseph, he sends an angel in a dream with a very important message. He says that everything you're imagining is not as it seems, Joseph. Mary is indeed with child, but of the Holy Spirit. And this child is God's child. But he will be yours to raise, and you will give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And then Matthew tells us that all of this was to fulfill the words that Isaiah had spoken to Ahaz centuries earlier. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. And you know something? Joseph listened. He did as the angel commanded. He took Mary as his wife. And when she gave birth to a son, he did call his name Jesus. I don't want you to think that it was easy for Joseph, though. It wasn't. Every day, Joseph had to trust. Every step of their journey together as a family, through every phase of their son's childhood and adolescence. This faith thing that we're called to exhibit is not for the faint of heart. In fact, the Lord tells Ahaz, if you don't stand firm in your faith, you won't stand at all. We know from our Bible readings that Ahaz shook and shook until he finally, eventually fell. But not Joseph. Joseph, strengthened on God's promise, fulfills the words of Matthew 24, 13, that says, He who stands firm till the end will be saved. God's promise of Emmanuel means that God would stick with Joseph and Mary and empower them throughout all of life's tough spots. And you know something? God sticks with you, too. He sticks with all of us because that's what Emmanuel means. He identifies with our weaknesses by becoming one of us, one with us in the flesh, dying for our sins, destroying death in his resurrection. God with us means that he sticks with us through all of the tough spots in our lives. Sickness, poverty, loneliness, addiction. God bless you. Some of you are raising kids. Some of you are raising your children's kids. That's got to be one of the toughest jobs there is. New challenges every day, month, and year. There are all sorts of tremors and terrors in this life. Some of you are facing pretty tough situations. And you think, if only God would give me a sign. But wait, he has given you a sign, and it's more than a sign. He's given you a Savior. His name is Jesus, and he's called Emmanuel, God with us. And in your baptism, you've been called his child, a child of God with the promise that he is with us, God with us to the end of the age. Are you in a tough spot right now? Then I certainly hope and pray that considering the outcome 
of these two sons of David separated by centuries helps. The Bible says in Psalm 1, verse 6, The Lord watches over the path of the righteous, but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. What do you think? Can your God be trusted? No matter the cause for alarm, look to the babe of Bethlehem and consider the angel's words. And you tell me, is there anything too difficult for him? Would he not have saved Ahaz in the southern kingdom? Did he not take care of Mary and Joseph? Will he not take care of you? Will he not help you? This is the way through the fear that grips us. It's found in the faith that God gives you to believe, to trust in his promise, that promised child, Emmanuel, God with us. Amen.